that this, that this where, imbalance where, where, didn't occur at all, apparently. Yeah, I mean, here you have a young fellow who I gather had a difficult upbringing and got himself into better circumstances, a girlfriend, a supportive mother, and her mother, and was making progress. And what in the dickens? Then he, then he lapses back. So these circumstances are very, very important, I think, in understanding what you are then confronted with in this sudden thing bursting into a store and somebody pops up on one side of you, you spin around, you have a gun in your hand, you pull the darn trigger. The final event could be a reflexive thing that maybe anybody mm -hmm. would have done, yeah. given everything else that led up to it. The question is whether the, the self-control that you could exert in where you have minutes or hours or days to think about it was not doing its job. Does it go all the way back? I mean, because the presence of his friends seems to be a pressure on him. Well, I do wonder occasionally when we see people that are impulsive and the like, whether the environment, that the, the way they behave is, is appropriate for the environment in which they're actually operating. In other words, if I'm in an environment where there are guns and there's danger and, and uh, people are living you know, by selling drugs and all kinds of other things, the guidelines that, I be, that, that govern my survival in an, envi an environment like, like that might be very different than some other one, say, a suburban environment where everything is working presumably. Smooth. On the surface. On the surface. Well, taking all of that into consideration. Yes. What should happen to this kid? What, what, how should he be judged? What, if he's judged guilty, what kind of a sentence should he get? We have a young person and we have a life ahead of him. We have you know, 50, 60, 70 years of a life. And of course, we can just lock him up, but we do too much of that. We have too many people locked up. And the question is, among those that we're doing this to, is there another route? Is there something that we can do for somebody like this? In this case, there is an issue of drugs, there is issues of the peer group that he lives with, there's a question of how mature is this kid's brain, and what can we do about those things? Well, each one of them offers some possibility of dealing with it versus just locking him up for the rest of his life. This almost sounds like you, you think it's possible to develop exercises for the brain that strengthen yeah. your, your yes. uh, impulse uh, control the muscles. Idea, the idea, you know, is, is uh, the brain is not cast in stone here. The, the, uh, the remarkable feature of it is that, that its connections, how one neuron talks to another and, and all, are being remodeled every day. The opportunity to, uh, to uh, manipulate that, I think, is present. After all, we learn things, we do change our behaviors and so forth, and, and we're increasingly able to monitor these kinds of processes. And I would think tailoring our approach to our increasing knowledge of when, where, and how these things are occurring would make sense in the long haul.